Praise God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for the lesson today, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Love today, Lord God. We know that your love is essential. We know that we need it. We've been talking about it, and you showed us in your word. God, we thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that's not here, everyone that wishes they could be here. God, I'm just grateful, Lord God, for those that are here. God, I just bless your name, Lord God. And Lord, we are going to listen attentively. We're going to follow your word, and we're going to learn to love just like you love. We're going to learn to give and learn to share and learn to care. God, what if it's this tonight that you decided that everyone here would be blessed? Mm. That everyone here will get all the answers prayed in God. We thank you that we've made it tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God, move by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Go to Matthew. It was in Matthew chapter 22. Amen. Verse 34. And this is our focal verse. Praise God. We continue to talk about what we've been talking about. And that's loving God and loving people. Somebody say, love God love. and love people. Love. Amen. I believe that it is essential. Praise God. I believe that the body of Christ be we, for so long, I had a pastor walk in front of the gym yesterday, and he's from Anderson, Indiana, and Pastor Del we tried to, matter of fact, and he spoke of something into my life yesterday that was very powerful about doctrine and about staying in the Word. Amen. He's down in the church in Anderson now, and he said, pray for his church. And now that he's outside of the walls, outside of the gates of Michigan City, he's seeing some things different. Amen. And he's seeing kind of what you never know. What the problems are when you are inside the problem as well. Yes. Yes. Always liking that into a jar of marbles, right? And all these marbles are the same color. And you wanted the marbles. You can't even if you're on the edge of the jar, you can't really see what's going on because everything is cluttered together, right? Mm -hmm. But if you take one of the marbles and take it outside the glass jar, and if that marble had eyes, it could then look inside that jar and say everything that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So praise God. I'm glad that God had took us out of the world. We're not, when we're taking us not out of the world, but he's taking us out of the world system. But he's allowed us to take a snapshot and look back at where he brought us out from. Amen. Amen. And he told me some powerful things on yesterday. And you know, I began to share about love and what we were talking about. And I said, man, that is what's necessary. Sometimes we've, we've, we've preached all the way around that. Yeah. And it was love that, that caused Jesus Christ to come and give his life for us. Amen. 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 So when you think about it, it, it's all about love. Amen. It's all about love. So the scripture reads that, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Understand that the Sadducees and the Pharisees were two groups that were at odds with one another. They always bumped heads. But they were always trying to outwit each other or wise each other. Just philosophers, just like college professors, they were always at odds trying to outwit somebody. Amen. But so they tried to outwit the, the, the master of wisdom, the creator of the universe, <laughs> embodied in the man called Jesus. So they wanted to get together and, and, and they came together. Then why well, ain't that funny people that don't even like themselves and get together when they want to come against you? Well, it's kind of, I'm just going to throw that in there. That, that kind of came up. I mean, these folks don't even talk on a normal basis, but they come together because so they're ready to slam Jesus. They're ready to catch him up, right? So, and then one of them said, the Lord asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, this word tempting right there, go back, that word tempting right there means to test him. Amen. Because when the Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, that word means he was tested by God as well. So he's tested. So when, when, when they came to him, they came to tempt him. They came to tempt him. They was tempting him. They was trying to tempt him to uh, say something that would get him caught up. They wanted to catch him up in his own words. Tempting him and saying, watch this. What's he said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Now watch this. He said, the great commandment. It's powerful because they asked for one commandment and Jesus gave them two. Yeah, <laughs> they asked for one commandment. Which one is the great commandment? And watch what Jesus said. Jesus said this. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord, meaning thou, meaning you, shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Amen. It's everything in you. Remember, they were talking about with every body part, with everything that 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 that, that is made up of shade of either and with all your soul that means your will your mind your emotion and with all your mind amen it's hard to love the lord with all your mind when you got your mind on everything else that's right, that's right. Yeah. let's go to isaiah 26 and 3 i'm gonna give you a powerful scripture today i'm gonna toss this in right here this this is gonna be a scripture we're gonna toss in isaiah chapter 26 and 3 watch this thou will keep him 
in perfect peace, what? Whose mind is stayed on thee. So how can we ask God to do something? We get up in the morning, ask him to do it, boom, we're going to think about everything else he didn't think about. And then at, later on in the evening, we say, God, why you didn't do what I asked you? He said, and then you'd have no peace throughout the day. But you'd have no peace because you asked him to do it, but you looked at everybody else to get it done. He said, if you ask me to do it, maybe you should worship me all day. Yeah. Maybe you should say thank you, Father God, because I believe when my prayers turn into, when your prayers turn into prayers of thanksgiving and not God give me, give me, give me, I believe that's what we begin to see. See, God is not getting ready to do anything new, Brother Aaron, because in six days he created everything and he called it good. And the seventh day he rested. So why am I asking God to do something new? The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. All right. So when I pray, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You have to be stayed. So God is the object of your faith. Right? The problem is, people are the object of our faith and people say they're going to do something. But they sometimes can't even do what they say they're going to do. Right. I do it all the time. I want to do it all, but I can't do it all. That's right. He promised to keep you in perfect peace. And the only way you can keep your mind stayed on Jesus is that you trust Him. Yes. Amen. Yes, Brother Shay. Okay. You don't want me to fall again? Mm -hmm. I don't want to fall either. Amen. The Lord. Praise God. So that would keep the imperfect peace of his mind. It stayed on thee because he trusted thee. So if you don't love someone, we want to stay on the focus of love tonight. If we don't love him, we don't trust him. Amen. Amen. But watch this. When you realize how much he loves you, mm. then you learn to trust him even more. Yes. How much does God love you? Sister Rosa, how much does God love you? He, he loves her eternally. Forever, that's a powerful answer right there. He loves you eternally. That means forever, always, he always loves you. So that means what about when you mess up? Papa died when you mess up, do he still love you? Amen. He didn't just look at the cross. He couldn't go any further. Amen. He went all the way to the cross. Amen. So God doesn't love us any more when we do good, and he doesn't love us any less when we do bad. Somebody say that's love. That's love. Because yeah, so, sometimes we've been tricked out there to think that the more we do good for God, the more he loves us. Watch this. The scriptures say God is love. So God's motive and his character are the same. So God loves you because he loves. Watch this. A car takes you somewhere because it's a car. Right? <laughs> Praise God. Your clothes comfort you and go over you and wrap your body because they're clothes. Amen. You put them on a bicycle, they ain't going to do the same. Oh, God. Amen. God is love. Try to make them hate it. Don't work. Yeah, yeah. Because God is love. Amen. Amen. So when people start talking about what God is saying about you, you take them to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And you say, no, God knows the thoughts that he has towards me. I don't know what he has towards you, but say, I, God knows the thoughts that he has towards me. Amen. Go there. Praise God. I'm just, these are scriptures that's coming to me and popping out of my mind and I'm just going to roll with them. Amen. Jeremiah 29 11. I believe that's when I'm in my best. I believe that's when you're at your best when God just speaks through you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. God said, I got some stuff that I'm thinking about you, Aaron. I know the thoughts I'm thinking. Can't nobody change my mind about what I'm thinking. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Why wow, that's cold. Well, I know what I'm thinking yes. about you, Sister Gas. I know Sister Ask what I'm thinking about. They can be thinking what they want. But the Bible says only the word of the Lord is going to stand. Yeah. Yes. So it don't matter what they're thinking. So let's find out what he's thinking. Yes. Right? I know the plan that I have. You said the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Say, God got somewhere for me to go. Yes. He knows it already. He never changes his mind ever because God don't change his mind because he's immutable. And the word immutable means I never change. He said, the Lord thy God, I change not. That means God never changes. You can't get him to change his mind. Amen. So, yes. to give you an expected end. Praise God. So now we know God will keep us in perfect peace and we keep our mind stayed on him because we trust him. Yes. Now we know that God knows the thoughts that he has. I should trust him because he knows everything. And guess what? He knows the thoughts that he has towards me and that thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring me to an expected end. That's why you don't have to expect, accept any negativity from any human being. Mm. Because it's not God. God got thoughts of 
thoughts of peace of you yes. and not thoughts of evil of you. So anytime somebody saying something evil, it's not coming from God. Right. It's powerful in itself, y'all. Just to be here tonight to hear that, that God ain't thinking like everybody else is thinking. Yeah. And people not thinking like he's thinking because they can't. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 So the greatest two commandments, back to Matthew 22, Love the Lord, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all my heart and all my mind. So, this is the first and great commandment. You asked for the first, you asked for the great commandment, I gave it to you. But I'm also tossing one in. He says, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We already talked about in Ephesians 5 and 29 that no man hates himself, but every man loves himself. We've been talking about that, so everybody's been taught that. You know what? The pastor told me, and I done heard it said before. Pastor told me, and I believe I even told people that before. You can't love nobody else till you love yourself. Well, guess what? I was wrong. They were wrong. You already loved yourself. Because no man hated himself. But everybody take care of yourself. Everybody pamper themselves. Amen. Most people love themselves. Amen. Praise God. So, he says you got to love your neighbor as yourself. So, since you love yourself. Somebody say, since I love myself. Already. I might as well show the love of God to my neighbor. That's good. Yeah, watch this. God gave me this today. I was sitting on a train today. The true, authentic, biblical love lived out in its simplest form is life-changing. Man, say that again. True, biblical love lived out not just biblical love learned. See, we can learn biblical love, but not live out biblical love. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. We can learn a lot of stuff. I can learn a lot of stuff in school you'll never use now. All right. You learn a lot of it, but you don't use it today, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So God wants everything that we learn in church, he wants it to be used when we walk outside of the four walls. Amen? Amen. Amen. He wants us to live out. So he says, Authentic biblical love, what, what the Bible calls love, and we're going to talk about it today, lived out in its simplest form is life changing. Biblical love lived out is life changing. I ask the question, but how does this love work, God? This is what I'm asking the Lord today, and how do we live out this God kind of love? I'm asking the Lord, I'm talking to the Lord, I'm, I'm going back and forth, I'm reasoning with God because I don't want to come in here and say anything that I want to say. I want to say what God wants me to say, amen? amen. So, so, so as a Christian, over time we should realize by now, this is what God was saying, by now, we should realize by now that God's love is essential. You should realize now to be a Christian and live this out and be successful and live a victorious Christian life, God's love, somebody say, is essential. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why it's essential. I'm going to write down, give you three with, because without. It's essential because without. When you say the word essential, you mean it's a must. Because without it, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians contextually speaks to Apostle Paul talking to the church. And he's talking to them uh, in reference to, to spiritual gifts. But in chapter 12, he talks about spiritual gifts. But chapter 13, he talks about a more excellent way. Somebody say a more excellent way. Because he said we all got these gifts. And everybody in church want to know, what's my gift? What's my gift? Can I lay hands? Can I prophesy? Can I speak with new tongues? What's my gift? He says, he said, desire the higher gift. But he said, let me show you a more excellent way. Let's, let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at the last verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because in order to start at 13, we want to see where we're coming from. Right, Brother Tom? Where are we coming from? But covet earnestly the best gifts. Remember the whole chapter 12 talks about gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Somebody say love, love. is a more excellent way. Excellent. Yet I show you a more excellent way. And then he began to talk about this. And I believe love is essential because without it, write this down, number one. Without it, our communication is ineffective. Write that down. Man, I'm going to give you the scripture right there. Let's go to chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to tell you what it is. It, it, what it is not, praise God. 
And then I'm going to tell you how the scripture back that up. Watch this. And though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. So I can be an eloquent speaker. I can solve all my problems with my words. I can speak like angels to tell you things that blow your mind. But if I don't have charity, I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, just like I was on the radio. Now, when we are in communication, now use this in the marriage. Use this in a relationship. Use this in a relationship with a father, a son, a son and a daughter, a daughter and a mother. Use this in a relationship. Now, you're telling them the right things, but are you using love to be the channel to get it to them? Amen. It's good, y'all. Amen. Yeah, my communication is flat out ineffective if I don't have love. Think about how many marriages could be saved. Think about how many relationships could be made. How many people could stay on their job and not get fired? If the boss would have went to them and said, listen, I'm giving you one more chance because I love you. Instead of saying, mess up one more time, you're out of here. Well, he don't like you, you don't like him. Guess what? You're ineffective. But he's a great worker. I'm telling you, we're missing a lot of things in our life because we aren't using the channel of love to channel our feelings. And we done got caught up in our feelings and we become ineffective in our communication, number one. Number two, without love. Somebody said without love. Our understanding is incomplete. Man, our understanding is incomplete. Because if God got anything to do with it, it start with love and it end with love. God got anything to do with it, Sister Beaver, it start with love and it end with love. The Bible said Let love never, never fails. That's just tripped out, man. Love, man. Love can make a dude stop smoking crack. He's been smoking crack for 20 years and make a, make a man that's caught up in pornography put that camera down and stop looking at that pornography. It can make a man, a prostitute, stop prostituting, right? Because you keep loving them. You find them on the corner and you buy them something. You find them on the corner and you take them somewhere and you show, buy them some new clothes and show them the love of God. The love of God lived out in its basic, simplest form is life-changing. It's life changing. I brother this brother Mark, you still do dodgeball over there? Do dodgeball. And he let me come over there one time and speak to a bunch of youth and we got a chance to play some dodgeball. And I realized I wasn't a real good dodgeball player. I thought I was gonna go over there and kill him and smash it. But them dudes was little, but they could slam that ball. And I seemed to go out like the first of two rounds or something. I didn't think that was too cool. I said, Well, we're gonna get to preach because I ain't doing too good on, on, on the volleyball court. But I remember that, and I remember the love that Mark was showing to all these youth that would show up in the gym at church just to play dodgeball. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to use that. We got to use every platform that we have to channel the love of God through it. Now, remember, I'm going to stay on pace right now. Without it, our communication is effective, but without it, our understanding is incomplete. Let's go to um, chapter, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, wow, I got a mean gift, man. And I can tell you, brother, what you put on, what you're going to put on tomorrow. I can tell you, man, how much money your check will be. Like, I can tell you, man, all that. So you, you coming to me, right? Because I have to give and understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge. And, and you know everything. I know mysteries about the Bible. I have knowledge about the Bible. And though I have all faith, I mean, you see me doing stuff that nobody else can do in the faith. So that I can remove mountains. But if I don't have charity, I'm nothing. Man, love, God's love is essential, y'all. I can do all that stuff. Now, we're talking about in reference to us and heaven, not to us and what man thinks, because if I can do all this thing, I'm bad to man. But to God, he said, what I wanted to get through, I wanted you to prophesize to him. I wanted you to have all the faith. I wanted you to understand with knowledge. I wanted you to have all the mystery, but I wanted you to do it so that you can lead him to me, not lead him to you. Well, that's proud, Wayne. Amen. Yes, John. In the secular world, the sports and entertainment and all that, you're allowed to be arrogant if you're good. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what they're doing is they're setting these people up. Mm -hmm. Just talking about that. Now, AD, now, now AD, he out the league. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, he put the rate of 30 million. Praise God. Then Belichick put him on the team. But then they build all this, and then it's a little bit of his fault, too, because you get caught up in that social media, and it's a game because the trick once you say sin and release it, it's out there. And now he said he don't want to play football no more. He said if we go back to college. I said, pray God, I believe you got enough money. Yep. Amen, folks. It worked. I see, that's done. That's a double. What's it look, man? 
the dude gonna be the richest student on campus. <laughs> Amen. I pray you find Jesus. That's what I told him. Yeah. I don't care nothing about all that other junk. Because all that other stuff don't matter at the end of the day. Yeah, that's right. You know, a lot of, yes, sir. Well, the, the, the wealth for, for God, the currency is, is completely different. It's completely different. Than what matters in the world. Amen. Praise God. Bob said, what does it profit a man to gain the what? Whole world. And lose his soul. You know what's a powerful scripture? Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, based on what you say every time. I'm going to roll with this. The Spirit will help us out. Every like what? I mean, you can take this whole world, roll it up, three, and put it in your soul, and it still wouldn't feel your longing for earthly desires. <laughs> Watch this. Thank you. He has made everything beautiful in his time, talking about God. Also, he has set the world in their heart. God set the whole world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end so ain't nothing going to satisfy. Nothing will satisfy. You get this, you want some more. You get some more, you want some more. You want some more, you want some more, some more, and some more, right? Because he said he put the world in your heart. So ain't nothing new under the sun. Everything you get, man, praise God. You take a pig and you dress him up, put a three-piece suit on him and put some jewels on him and, 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 and drape him up. And let a whole pig be 30 seconds away. Come back and find that dressed up pig. He's going to be in that mud, kicking around. Amen. You can take a poor person and put him in a rich village. Find a way to live in poverty in a rich village. You take a rich man and put him in a poor, poor village and you'll find out a way to make money off of the people that are in the poor village. Wow. See, it's perception. What do you think? What are you thinking about God? See, what you think about God determines what you can get from God because the Bible says this, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Quit getting mad at people because they are crazy enough to believe the Bible. They love God. They know God loved them. They tapped into the love of God. They know their children of God. They believe in God for stuff. You believe in God for a, a, a Toyota, they believe in God for a Rolls Royce. Then you get mad and don't take all that. Okay. God said, delight yourself in the Lord. You do what? Get the desires of your heart. So without it, our communication is ineffective. So you try to communicate without love, guess what? Your communication is ineffective. You're trying to uh, um, get understanding or give understanding and you're trying to uh, portray something to people but your understanding is, is incomplete. Number three, without it, our giving is insufficient. Without it, our giving is insufficient. Verse three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, I'm out here feeding the poor, feed the children, I'm out here sowing into every uh, nation in the world. I'm doing it, and I'm doing it with joy. Because he says, as though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. That means everything you got to feed the poor. Look at this. And though I give my body to be burnt, you even willing to be crucified or burnt on the stake for Jesus Christ, or you're willing to do that so people can see you, but if you don't have charity, you're just a burnt up guy. It don't profit you nothing. Do it. But inside and inward, let's talk about this because the heart, no man knows the heart of man save God. But God know why I did what I did. Manipulation is something, y'all, in the church. Manipulation is something in the world. I could be doing this and saying I like you, I say I love you, all man, I'm great, and this is this. But on the back side of this stuff, there's another motive. So even though these people are feeding everything, if Bill Gates go and feed every nation, it ain't hurt them because he's rich. It's the woman with two mites who come up to the offering and give all things she had. And Jesus said, man, this woman that gave everything she had, and she had the right motives too. Amen. She gave more than all y'all. And others in the same service gave thousands. How in the world did two mites, mm. two pits, how two mites be more than everything everybody gave? Because she gave from her heart. Yes. God is judging us on the heart, y'all. Yes, yes. And I'm asking them, please, Lord God, 
filtered through my heart the words that I say. God help me to say the things that I mean what I'm saying and not make me say something that just seems to be saying right. Sound right. Amen? Amen. Because without it, y'all, I give it as insufficient. Somebody says, never enough. Never. Without it, your giving is never enough. But Aaron, if you give out of your lack with love, it's enough. Yes. But if you give all you got and don't have love, it ain't enough. That's right. Amen. Amen. Good. You can give somebody all this money. You can give somebody all these clothes and all these cars, but you don't really love. That's the problem with the kids. Our kids today. We give them everything, and if they can just scream out, just like a fish being in a tank, right? Fish in the tank, and it's opening his mouth, and you're walking by the fish bowl, and you're looking at the fish, and you really think the fish is saying, feed me. Mm -hmm. But the water is extra hot, and it's boiling, and he's really saying, help me. Yes. So we feed the kids with gym shoes and toys, and we feed them with all these exterior things, when the child is really saying, help me. Yes. You see, their mouth moving, but we think their mouth is moving for material things where their mouth is really moving for the love of God yes. that we're supposed to give them. Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Stay right there. Thank you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. You see that there on the screen? Because I got it for you. Bam, right there. How you doing? All right. Cousin in town back there. God bless you. Now watch this. Somebody said we're supposed to be new. We're supposed to be new. Remember, we talking about the first two great commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, and soul. That means 365 days of the year with your total being, we need to love the Lord. Is that easy to do, Tom? That ain't easy to do. Because we want to love him with our head and heart. We don't want to love him with our feet because our feet going somewhere else. We want to love them with our hands, but we want our hands to work on something that can get us paid. But we need to love the Lord with everything. Everything that we're doing should be towards God. Amen. Watch this. Why? Because therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. What does that mean? Somebody tell me what that means. What does it mean to be a new creature? Anybody? Take a shot at it. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't do the things I used to do? Okay. Hmm? All together different. Amen. You got the mind of Christ now. You got the mind of Christ, right? Your motives change, right? Your direction change, right? Your habits change, right? Your hangouts change, right? Your hobbies change, right? Why? Because you're not saying no more. The spirit that was in you is not the spirit that is now in you. The Bible said we have not the spirit of God. We're not his. Amen. Yes. I had an experience years ago. A guy actually, my chiropractor, asked me one day at the end of the day, he said, Tom, how does a person become a Christian? You don't normally get an open invitation like that. So I told him, and then I went home. The next time I saw him, he said, Tom, he goes, I prayed that prayer on the way home. He said, I got home, opened the door, and my wife said, what happened to you? Mm. She said, you don't look the same. Wow. Yeah. And he said, all of a sudden, stuff is bugging me that never bugged me before. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about. Amen. A new creature. You're a new creature. Yes. A new creature. In five Amen. Months. Amen. You got a new perception. The Bible said, if a man be born again, now he can perceive the things of God. For except a man be born again from above, unless he has born of the water and of the spirit. Born of the water, your mother, water break, I believe, boom, that's your physical birth. And then born of the spirit is your second birth. Born of the water, then born of the spirit. Without it, you can't even perceive the kingdom of God. Meaning you can't even see it. That's right. Amen? You can't even see it. That means you can't even understand what's going on in the kingdom except you're born again. The Bible says a natural man perceiving not the things of God because the things of God are what? They are spiritually discerned. Right. Amen? I mean, know we got this, 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 this new love. Any man that be in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. When, do, when are they passed away? Gradually? No, right now. But if we don't renew our mind to what has happened on the inside of us, we'll continue to walk out the old man. Yeah. I need my mind renewed. Amen? There's some areas in my life. Right now, God's sharpening. There's some areas that I thought I was there. Sometimes we think we didn't arrive. The Bible said, careful. When you think you rise, at least you fall. Yes. Amen. That's a good place to be, though, because if you've fallen, you fall with him because he promised never to leave you. He loves you standing up at your best. He loves you when you're down, not to your knees. Yes. That's when you learn, because you win some, you learn some. Yeah. Not lose, you win.
learned something. Yes, Mark. Uh, you have different inputs. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's the big thing that I noticed was that I'm putting different inputs inside of me after being a Christian like before. Amen. And that's where the change starts happening. Different inputs. Explain. Like what? Well, like your a tendency of reading the Bible more, a tendency of listening to less uh, secular music and more Christian music. Uh, uh, um, not watching the same type of movies, uh, not watching the movies for the same reason that I used to watch watch them before. Amen. You know, pornography meaning less and less, and, and being more of a no-no. Uh, me paying attention more to someone cussing. You know, where before it didn't even bother me, or I was right. finding myself cussing. Right, right. right. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. It's good. Powerful. So your desires change. Yeah, you know, this the old music. You know what I mean? Just don't get you like it used to get you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we, we really didn't know a lot of the old music. Since subliminal messages too. Yeah. I've been really tired, baby. Yeah. Trying to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you feel yeah. like I feel. Y'all know what that's yeah. 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 Come on. You know. And then, then, then next thing you know, you're thinking about what you were doing back then. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of singing victory is mine, victory is mine. You know the victory today is mine. I told Satan to get deep behind victory is mine. Singing a new song, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the answer. Because he is the answer. I don't care what the condition is. He is the answer. Amen? Amen. 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 So, just like we got real love, we got knockoff love too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got, we got knockoff love. What's knockoff love? Mona, what's knockoff love? Uh, counterfeit. Counterfeit. Bottom line, counterfeit. Anybody got a uh, knockoff coach before? Uh, mm -hmm. Knockoff... Uh, yeah, you see, this is man's back there. I ain't going to ask you, but praise God. We have some of us unknowingly got it. Knock off. Bizzle got a son. And he, it's, it's, it's a Christian rapper that I like. He said, I look around and all I see is knock off love. If you do for me, I'll do for you. Knock off love. You need it, I got it. Don't even worry about it. That's what that's, that's what this son said. You need it, I got it. Don't even worry about it. That's love. Love, yeah. One day you do, next day you don't. That's not off love. Amen. That's, that's not off love. One day you love him, the next day you don't love him. God loves you every day. It doesn't matter what time of the day, what you done wrong, God loves you. God loves the sinner. God hates sin. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's look at Galatians chapter 5 and 6. Praise God. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. So circumcision, meaning the law, obeying the law to the letter, don't avail of anything, nor circum uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. How I many of you know that God's ways are not our ways? Mm -hmm. God thinks totally different than you and I share. Yes. Sister Bebo, God thinks totally different. You don't know that what that person is dealing with is actually going to get them to their knees so they can come to Christ. Yes. You look at them and say, yes. they done you look at him and say, they done. Look at him. How can he be a preacher, a man of God, a woman of God? How can he be? And that very thing that they're dealing with go get him to where God wants him. But see, God's ways are totally upside down from our ways. And his thoughts are totally upside down. Yes. Man. Amen. Wow. It's kind of crazy. That's what bothers me about. See, it's okay for the world to judge the church. But it's a problem for the church to judge the world. Because the church should have the mind of Christ. And they should see people like Christ see people. They should see the pimp as a preacher. The prophet, prostitute as a prophetess. But they don't. It's okay for the people of the world to see us in a hypocritical state when we act in hypocritical. But our ways should be different from their ways. What differentiates us from them? If any man be Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have been new. What's the difference? So now we're in the faith. The Bible says, obey the law, not obey the law. Jews, Gentiles, avail of any. But faith, which worketh by love. What is faith? Faith is the truth. Faith is the substance of things. See, unseen. Faith is a substance of thing hoped for. So faith is the truth. Right? There must be testing. Amen. What's the test? 
I ain't see it yet. Hebrews 11 and 1. Go there real quick. I said, faith is the substance. Somebody say the truth. The truth. The truth. And then not only is the truth substance, that word means the concrete, the underlying, the underlaying of what your faith is built on. So your faith is built on the word. So faith is the truth. Watch this. The things hoped for. Now watch this. So faith is the truth. The evidence of things not seen. Somebody say, that's the test. The test is you say that I know God will pay my bills. The evidence is you ain't seen it yet. Boy, that's fine. The evidence is God won't hear me from cancer. Right? But but the evidence was he hadn't did it yet. I was laying on the bed, but he had to go into surgery. Watch this. Faith is the truth that must be tested. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 2. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Somebody say you get a testimony out of it. So once you stand on the truth, pass the test, now you got a testimony. The problem is in between selling the truth and the test, we drop the ball somewhere. So we never get a testimony. For by it, the elders retain a good report. The elders got a good report. You know what's crazy about the people in, in Hebrew? All those people died in faith. Never ever seeing what they was hoping for fulfilled. That's powerful. Do you have that kind of faith? I got faith for generations to come. I want to see my nephews, my cousins. I want to see my nieces, my cousins, my great, great, great nieces and nephews. I want to see them walk in the favor of God. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I want to see them begin to subdue kingdoms. I want to see them walk in the power of God, lay it on hands on the sick and they recover in elementary school. Yes, yes. How come we don't think about training up a next generation because older people can get callous and set in their way and it's some stuff you'll never get them to believe. But a child is young and he's pliable. God says, well, take away that stony heart and I'll give you a heart of flesh. That type of flesh that's pliable. If we ever try to sit the children down and teach them the word of God, I guarantee you they'll listen when they know love is connected to the message. Yes, amen. Guarantee you. Yes. We connected. When I had to sit up, shut up. Listen, we connected to the message. No, let God's love be connected to the message. Yes. But faith works by love. I have faith in a God that loves me. Faith works by love. How you gonna have faith in somebody you think loves you sometimes and then sometimes they don't? How you gonna have faith in somebody that you don't know that owns everything? So there's nothing that you can ask him for that he don't have. God loaded. My daddy loaded. Cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to the Lord. So now what happens is, you got the good son, you got the bad son. The good son can ask mama to drive the car. He said, here go the keys, you can go. The bad son, they both still son, can I drive the car, boy, you better not even look at the car. <laughs> the difference in between both of them, did one understand mama's love, then he does what mama asked him to do. So it's easy to get the keys. The second son know that mom loves him, but he really don't understand the depth of mother's love, so he don't do what mom tell him to do. And when mom, who knows he didn't do it, even though he said he did it, I'm talking about a scenario in my house. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I didn't do it. So I couldn't get the privileges that my brother got. He was working at 15, 14 years old. I was ripping and running and doing everything else. Amen. So once we understand the love of God, faith works by love. Watch this. I have faith in my daddy because I know what my daddy expects of me and I try to fulfill what my daddy expects of me. So therefore, I don't come timidly to the Lord. See, 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 perfect love cast out fear, right? Because fear has torment. So if you're going to God, and you question whether he answered or not, that means there's something wrong with you because ain't nothing wrong with him. All right. <laughs> he ain't did nothing. <laughs> he ain't did nothing. He ain't changed his mind on you or nothing. If I messed up, it's going to repent and ask for forgiveness. And then go boldly to the throne of grace and ask God to help you in the time of need. Yes. How many need help from the Lord right now? How many need something from the Lord? Everybody that needs something from the Lord. Need something from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So he said, you need to run full force towards me. Amen. Understanding how much he loved you. All these other folks in the Bible, I love the Lord. Everybody holler about, 
how much he loved the Lord. John who wrote Revelations, he says, I'm the apostle whom God loved. He got it right. Everybody wants to talk about how much they love God. John say, I realize God loved me. Yes. My love is failed in comparison to how much God loved me. Amen. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So there's two ways of looking at this phrase, faith, which worketh by love. One way is to say that true saving faith always expresses itself through love. True saving faith always expresses itself through love. True saving faith always expresses itself through love. Right? That's true. A God kind of faith will always have actions that conform to the commands of God's word. Right? Your, your, what your action will conform, right, to the commands of God's word. Praise God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Watch this. Do good to them that despitefully misuse you. That's hard to do. For you. But if you die, God is able to do it through you. So it was in my job, man, I had time, man. 20-something years at the railroad. And it's been rough. Been very rough, man. Very rough, man. Very unfair in a lot of ways. I said, God, you want me to love these jokers? I don't even like them. <laughs> he said, well, Daddy, and let me love them through you. See, until we as Christians get this word right, we're going to still be judgmental. We're going to still have another move left in us. We're going to still think it's already somebody else's fault. We're going to still say, look at him and not look at us. But when we understand the love, we're going to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm undone. Yes. And I dwell in people who's undone. Yes. Help me to separate myself and to do better. Yes. You want to hear that prayer. Yes. Amen. And even if you don't want to quit, watch this. God, I got this habit and I don't even want to quit. Mm -hmm. Tell him that. Yes. Say, God, could you please give me the power yes. to overcome this and show me why I should want to quit it? And then you get real deep with God. Yes, Lord. Now you're telling him what he already knows. But now he know you know. Yeah, yeah. Adam, where are you? You think God didn't know geographically where Adam was? Mm -hmm. yeah. God is the ultimate GPS. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 No, he wanted Adam to know where he was. Yeah. Adam, you are not in my graces no more. Mm -hmm. Adam, you are not in my favor no more. Adam, you ain't walking with me in the cool of the day no more. Come on, we're talking about God's love, everybody. God loves you. Amen. God loves you out of your faults. And then he will love you straight into your future. Love you out of your faults. And love you right into your future. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. If you believe that. Amen. So the New International Version says, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Amen. It's also accurate to say that love produces faith or is what makes faith work. You can say love makes faith work. We naturally trust those who we know love us. We naturally trust those who we know love us. Amen. A revelation of God's unconditional love for us will make faith naturally abound in us. We will be faith walkers once we have a revelation of God's love. You will walk in faith because you don't care what other people think. You know what he thinks about you. Things of peace and not of evil. And we know that he's trying to take you to your expected end. You don't worry about what anybody else says about you. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, I'm talking to somebody, everybody, including me, because God's speaking through me, never talking to you all from me. God is always talking to us through me. I told you that a long time ago. Ever since I've been preaching, I've always understood that I was just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist had a voice. Some folks are echoes. I'm not going to stand here and echo what another man say. I'm going to stand here and be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. So I'm going to echo and speak the oracles of God. The Bible said when you speak, speak the oracles of God. That means say it just like God said. Amen. Amen. That's what oracles Amen. of God mean. Amen. Amen. Say it just like God said. Amen. This world is so connected. Every time I see Brother Tom Underwood come in this, in this Bible study, it blows my mind that every scripture that come out of my mouth, every revelation that I have, all his knowledge, not to give them all the credit, but his sister Betsy Underwood worked at me at the railroad and I wasn't there for six months. 
And she was a loving lady. And she, her feet was messed up. And she had feet problems. And she would always come to work. And I was a young dude in the faith. Didn't know nothing. Trying to put two scriptures together. And I had one scripture. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. And she'd look at me. And she'd just look at me. Talking about this love. Lived out. She kept looking at me. She kept saying, every time I get on break, she said, you want to come in here? I go in the break room, man. I go in there with her. She sit down with her. She just love on me. I'm an ex-drunk, ex-drug user, ex-all this old drug dealer, all this stuff. But she seen something different in me. Yes. Yes. Best me I never forget that family, ever in my life. His father's handwriting is all over my house. All in my, in my room where all my books are. His father's handwriting, Russell Underwood. So this is what happened, y'all. I'm standing here with revelation, knowledge from the books I read of D.L. Moody, D.L. Moody's Preacher's Conference, all this stuff. Praise God was given to me from his sister. One day I came to work, she said, Ron, I'm getting ready to leave. She was getting ready to leave. She's going out on disability because of her feet. She said, I'm getting ready to leave. But mama woke me up, told me to get all my daddy books and give them to that guy named Ron at work. Tell him I am, said you. What do you mean, God? What, I am. 
So God had to define himself without having to confine himself. He had to tell him that he was everything. Yes. But he couldn't limit himself in the box and say he was just one thing. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he everything. He said, tell him, I am sent you. So what we can transfer to the next generation, I am represents the ever-present presence of God. Whenever you hear I am, it represents the ever-present presence of God. Let me tell you something. This is what has happened in church. We passed on teachings. Everybody heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, raise your hand. Everybody heard about the three Hebrew boys, raise your hand. Everybody heard about uh, Jesus walking on the water, raise your hand. So we've passed on teachings, right? We've passed on traditions. I mean, you know we got church anniversaries. I mean, you know we have church anniversaries, pastors' anniversaries. Come on, somebody. We have all of that. We passed on tradition. I mean, you know we still testify in church. Come on, give a hot testimony. Come on, give up. Hey, I'm baptized, set the dip, and I'm going to go save, sanctified. Them old folks are sanctified. They crack me up. Yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and sanctified. So we're still passing on teachings, testimonies, right, and traditions. But we fail to pass on the presence of God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We fail to pass on I am. Yes. Right. Kids, they excited about church. We went to Mount Zion and Bo Taylor her. Her brother, who was my pastor, we had 105 children in the youth choir. Mm -hmm. New Hope had just as many. But you know what? When we used to go to New Hope to sing, and New Hope come to Mount Zion to sing, you know what it was? In my mind, there was competition. Because yes. it was built up like that yes. in choir yes. yes. We gonna blow them out. Yes. Yes. Amen. We come down, we gonna walk you down. Me and Bull in the back, ten of <laughs>